Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to be taking a look at one-time passwords on Cisco routers. A one-time password is exactly what it sounds like. It's a password that can be used only one time. In the Cisco implementation, it's actually probably more accurate to call this one-time credentials because you're going to be using this in combination with a username. So you might set up username, Packet Lab, one-time password, Cisco. Probably the biggest benefit of the one-time passwords is it gives you the ability to allow an untrusted party, uh, such as a third-party vendor, to access your router without the need to share out your existing passwords. So sometimes you run into the situation where you need to allow access to a third-party vendor or even just a, another department within your company to your router. And there's a, there's different ways that you can do this. You could set up a, a username password for them. You could share out an existing username password. <laughs> Probably share out the enable password at the same time. You really don't want to do that, especially with third-party vendors. What you want to do is you want to have a method where you can set them up with a set of credentials that allows them to access that device and then when they're done those credentials are destroyed or changed. And you could do this with quote-unquote conventional Cisco configurations. The problem is is that generally processes that start out with the best of intentions get overlooked uh, or bypassed in the name of expediency and sometimes quite honestly laziness. I'd worked for a company that would have to allow Cisco TAC engineers occasionally to access our routers for troubleshooting or whatever, some configuration possibly. But what would happen is you'd have to set up a set of credentials that were basically temporary, you know, a username, password, and a privilege level for Cisco. And then it was important that after they had completed their work, to either destroy those credentials or to change them so that it wasn't the same password, for instance, each time. Because the last thing you want is a uh, open security hole on your routers where somebody from Cisco could just at any time jump into your routers and make a few configuration changes here and there. And in our case, what it was was that you'd have to go in and enable a set of credentials on the ACS, uh, basically the TACX server. And how this started out was that when you need to allow Cisco access to the router, you would page out the ACS administrator. He would get on and he would uh, enable or create the set of credentials for Cisco and then as soon as they were done you'd page them out again and he would get rid of them. Well there's a couple problems with that. First of all a lot of this stuff happened at like oh dark 30 wasn't going on during business hours so you'd be waking him up. The other thing was that you know you had to get a hold of him. If you page him out and he didn't respond well then generally the work didn't get done and then that cascaded into another problem because the next day they'd be like well why wasn't this done? So as invariably happens with these things crap rolls downhill and so he went ahead and gave this process to the NOC because the NOC is there 24 by 7. Well, the NOC is pretty busy, so, you know, if they had bunch of routers down or something else going on, they weren't going to really be able to carve out time to get onto the ACS and set up these credentials. So invariably what happened was that these credentials became permanent. It, you know, there was a, a Cisco account with a password that wasn't Cisco, but it was damn close that just became permanent. So that defeated the whole process because at any given point, somebody from Cisco, and if it wasn't ackled off, somebody from the outside world using those Cisco credentials could get in and configure the routers. One-time passwords alleviate some of this workload and makes a lot easier to configure something like that and also what's really cool is it takes care of the cleanup afterwards it takes care of getting rid of this set of credentials so it truly is a one time so how do these one time passwords work basically what it is is it's just an option that's added into the username configuration so you'll go on and you create your username in this case we're using the username vendor and then you'll type in one time and there is a hyphen in there keep that in mind and as you can see if you invoke the Cisco iOS help with the question mark you do have a couple options here you have pass password and secret. I'm not going to go into the difference between these other than to say that password is unencrypted and secret is the same thing. It's a password that just has MD5 encryption. There's another lesson out there if you want to know more about the differences between these two. So once you've configured those credentials, a username, password combination, you usually want to throw a privilege level on there. Uh, again, that's a different lesson. I'm not going to get too deep into that. Uh, the username will appear in the running configuration. So if you do a show run include user, you can see on R3 we have a username packet lab that was pre-existing. And here we have our user. We've got the vendor uh, we gave him privilege level 15 and a one-time password of Cisco. I've got here, do not write this configuration, and I will address that in a couple slides here. So in this example, we have configured R3 to use the one-time password, and what you do is from R1, we could test this out, we tell net to R3, we use vendor, Cisco is our one-time password, and we are in, and we can verify that we are at privilege level 15 by doing a show privilege. Now here's where it gets interesting. Once the one-time credentials have been used, and we did use them here, they are automatically removed from the running, keep in mind running configuration. This is that same user, he's accessed R3 from R1, he's in, he used vendor as his username, 
and Cisco has his password. He's in privilege level 15. Everything's working great. The issues of show run include user, and you can see that the only username in there was the username Packet Lab uh, that was already pre existing. So iOS has automatically removed the one time credentials from the running configuration as soon as this user uses them. And that's pretty smooth. That covers the quote unquote cleanup bit here so you can do this and you don't have to worry about going back later and making sure that you have removed these credentials. Like everything in life there's a couple caveats that go along. You gotta take the good with the bad. In this case is not too bad. You need to be running 12.4 iOS code. I'm not sure of the exact version. I think it's 12.4.11. Basically if you're running 12.4 code you're likely to be covered on this. Uh, because it was added, you see one time was added into the 12.4 release. And here we are in R4, if I do a show ver, I can see that I am running 12.3 code, so when, when I go ahead and try to configure username vendor, and then I put in the one time option, it's an unrecognized command. Whereas on R3, I'm running 12.4, uh, 15 in this case. And when I issue username vendor one time and invoke Cisco iOS help, we can see that this is a legitimate command. If you remember a couple slides ago, I said do not write the configuration, do not issue a copy run start when you configure the one time credentials. The reason for this is that once you access that router using these one-time credentials. Cisco iOS does that cool magic bit where it removes it from the running configuration. It removes it from the running configuration. It does not touch the startup configuration. So in this case we're looking at R2. R2 had one-time credentials set up with the username vendor password Cisco. After that it was accessed using those credentials so Cisco iOS removed that from the running configuration. But as we can see here this must have been written and did not remove it from the startup configuration. So router 101 when you reload this router, it's going to come up with the startup configuration and it's going to load that into the running configuration. So in our case, when the router reloads, we can see now when we do a show run that we have both our normal packet lab, packet lab, and we also have our one time credentials. So it's kind of not one time, it's multiple times. Keep that in mind. That's something you're going to want to watch. I would strongly recommend not to write the configuration after configuring this command probably don't want to write the configuration until after the credentials have been used. So this works out fine if you've got a third party vendor, you throw this on there, vendor logs in, he makes his changes, he writes the configuration. If he's writing the configuration, the second that he logs in, it's removed these credentials from the running configuration. So he should be good to go to write this. It's not going to write the one time credentials into the running configuration. It's just that when you configured this, you probably don't want to write this. I don't know if I would count this as a caveat, but it might come under the heading of unexpected behavior. The one time credentials are removed from the running configuration of the router once that router is accessed with those credentials. If you access the router with another set of, you know, for lack of a better term, non one time credentials, multi time possibly, then the uh, one time credentials remain in the running configuration. And I mean, that makes sense to me, but like I said, it might be an unexpected behavior. And rather than going through this slide here, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to pull up R2 here and do a show run, include user. And we can see here that we have username packet lab, privilege level 15, password packet lab. That is our persistent or multi time credentials. Our one time credentials here are vendor with the password of Cisco. So let's go on over to R1. I think I can just up arrow here. I'm going to tell that. And I'm going to log in with packet lab, packet lab. So now if I had used vendor Cisco, the one time credentials, to log into R2, then those would be removed from the running configuration. But since I didn't use those credentials, if I do a show run, include user, I should see both sets of usernames still persistent in the running configuration. And I do, you can see it's still here. So this will only get removed from the running configuration when you access the router with those credentials. So keep that in mind.